Two. Okay, today we'll start Hashem New Perak. Um, it starts on that Samach Dalit, that's 64. Yeah. We thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. And we have the basic Megdash immediately. And Shbir uh, Foshlema for all those that need her Foshlema. Starts like this Rabbi Eliezer Reimer. Rabbi Eliezer says, Peskan Lada Mechvaydava Vimai. Person takes a nether and then he regrets it. So he goes to the Chacham and the Chacham says, Well, if you would have known this and that, would you have taken the nether? So uh, he, when he says no, so then he says, okay, so that's enough of a, a way out of the nether. You never would have taken it. And they say, Motalach, and it goes away. Now, one of the ways that a person can say he regrets taking a nether is, he says, look, now they're saying about you, you took this nether, people are saying that who raised you? They're saying that, you, how did they raise a person like this? Um... It must be that there's something wrong with the with the parents. It doesn't look good on the parents when the son is just uh, um, taking vows left, right, and center, and uh, <laughs> saying you're forbidden to me, and this is forbidden to me, and I'm forbidden to you. So, Rabbi Lezer says that if the person comes to, to the chacham, says that I want to get rid of the nether, the chacham says, well. If you would have known that they would be saying this about uh, your parents because you took the nether, would you have made the nether? So he says, no. So he says, oh, that's a good Pesach. That's a good way out. It's a sign of regret. We had a big discussion about this on Daf Chafiz. What's the Pshat in Paiskin? Um, does it mean over there? The, the discussion was over there. Does it mean that the Chacham can initiate it? Does it mean... Um, that you, you need to have more specific um, details about, obviously there's a regret because he's coming to the Chacham, he's coming to the Chacham. If he didn't regret the nether, he wouldn't come. But you need to have a specific concept about the nether that why this nether was not, is not what I want. Could it be that maybe he took the vow when he was upset? Yeah, about something right. He took the vow when he was upset. But the fact that he's upset and takes a vow shows that it's, uh, he has a temper. <laughs> Uh, possibly, and um, uh, he doesn't think things through, you know. Okay, Chacham and Maishim Chacham say that this doesn't work. This is not a good uh, a good way out. It doesn't work. Get out of the nether by just saying that uh, if you would have known what they would say about your parents uh, based on the way that you behave, so that's not a good way out. We'll see. We'll see in a, in, a, in a moment what's going on. Actually, we have to wait for the Gemara. It's sort of a buy and rub. We'll discuss what's going on. Right. Right. It doesn't say in the text of the Bible. Uh, did you see it in the text of the Bible? <laughs> Does this kind of implicate the mitzvah of kibbutz then? The person is failing to do that mitzvah somehow. Um, that's very interesting. In 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 this discussion, it will come up a little bit that it has to do with the mitzvah of kibbutz or there's there are comparisons to the mitzvah of kibbutz but um, not necessarily do you have to do you have to learn it like that. It could be it could be brought into that. Let's we'll see in, a, in a, throughout the discussion. Amar Rab Tzadik. Rab Tzadik says so. Rabbi Eliezer is of course Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkinus. That's always Rabbi Eliezer of the Mishnah. It's Rabbi Eliezer Agadol. He's the student of Yechon ben Zakkai. Right. He's the one that doesn't forget anything. It would have been uh, interesting if it would have been Rabbi Yeshua. <laughs> Be sure it's the one that says praise this is mother, but it doesn't say that. Um, um, it's Rabbi Eliezer. And um, 
wouldn't have any way of putting this in. I know, you know, Rabbi Lezer, we have that Kirky the Rabbi Lezer that he left his father to go study Torah. And then his father had some hardships and then uh, his father wanted to disown him. He shouldn't get part of the inheritance. He wasn't around when, uh, and then Rabbi Chen ben Zakai um, had him say it Dvar Torah, he spoke. And then he was so impressed that he said, I'm giving everything to you. Uh, and they said, no, I just want to be like the brothers. That's what, so the, the, the introduction to Pekid the Rebbe Lezer. Anyway, Reb Tzaddik is Reb Tzaddik, the one that fasted for 40 years, right? So the base of English won't be destroyed. He says, I'm Reb Tzaddik. Why don't you say that if you would have known that it's not good, it's a disrespectful to Hashem to take a vow, as we learned in before, that anyone that vows is as if they made a bummer, and that's so he keeps it as if he brought a sacrifice. So why don't you just tell him that? So I don't know if he means this seriously, or if he means, if he's asking Rabbi Lezer that, how could you say what you're saying? Is, is Reb Tzaddik in the, com, in the commentary serious about this, that this should actually work? Just like Rabbi Eliezer says that saying, if you would have known that your parents would, uh, didn't, doesn't look good for your parents, so you, would, you, would you have taken the vow? So is Reb, is Reb Tzaddik now saying, if you would have known that if it doesn't look good for God, would you have taken the vow? And that, that, that should actually work? Maybe, maybe he actually means that. Oh, in the notes. Um, oh, you see, I'm learning it. I, I was reading it like the Ram reads it. So there's two, actually two versions to this. There's two versions to this. One version is the way that you read it straight. Rabbi Tzaddik doesn't agree to this. He says, if you're going to say that um, you can get out of a vow by saying that, that um, it doesn't look good for your parents, then you'll say the same thing about God. And then there's no such thing as, uh, as Nadarim. There's never an other. We're going to see exactly what that means in the Gemara. There's another version here. The other version goes like this. Um, I'm adding in words now. There's a little star there. They said to Rabbi Tzaddik that if you're going to say that you can use, that you're going to use God as a way out of a nether, to say, if you would have known that God doesn't like Nadarim, would you have made the nether? So every nether you'll get out of. So so Rabbi Tzaddik actually meant that it should work. And they're responding to him why it doesn't work. You could just just put a statement out there and just say God doesn't like the dark. Yeah, if you would have known um, when you took the nether that God doesn't like it. Oh, that's would specific. You have... Not in general. Yeah, but what they're responding to him is that they're saying, according to this version, they're responding is, is, is that if that's the case and there's no such thing as the dark, because you'll always be able to get out of it. We'll see exactly what this means. Yeah. But every that's an excuse for every nether. There's also the issue that you're mabatching the mitzvah, lo yukal devaro, right? Isn't that, I would think that's the big issue. But I should know this possible by heart by now. No, so, right? so um, that's where we start out. Imkain ein nedarim, we're going to see in the Gemara what it means. It, it could mean that there's no, that we're not being matir the nedarim properly. It could, it, there's other ex explanations for this, but basically, <laughs> What I'm saying though is it's a mitzvah to do what you say you're going to do. That's where we started out this whole safe. Right. And so they're coming along and saying you don't have to fulfill this mitzvah. Oh, no, no, no. We're talking about being mater than ever. Right. You're allowed to be mater than ever. The question is, what's the way out? So you have to have some sort of excuse why originally. You wouldn't have taken this nether if you had known this uh, this bit of information. Because you're retroactively uprooting the word. Yeah, words. yeah, right. So yeah. this mitzvah never. It's like this mitzvah never. It's like you. It was a mistake. Never. It's like it's a mistake. 
Okay. However, even though there's a machlekes over here, if, if you can use a person's parents as a heter for the nadarim to say that if uh, if you would know what they were saying about your parents that raised you, the fact that you that they raised a child that just makes nadarim all the time, so would you have made this nether? So the chachamim said that is not a good a good excuse. It's not a way out. So maidim chachamim l'rabelazer b'davar shebeinu l'beinu v'vim shepaisan l'bechvayd v'vim. If the vow actually did contain something that affected the parents, so then they would agree that that actually worked. The, uh, the Chacham would agree that he can say that regarding the parents, I, I didn't want, uh, I, didn't, I wouldn't have taken that vow that that's something that actually affects my parents. Does that he could regret? It would be um, it would be if he said that his father can't have benefit from it, you know, something like that. Right. I was referring to this process. The other matter. Your explanation is this means you never took the nether. Right. The annulment means the annulment takes it off the the, the mafreya. It's like an annulment for the marriage in modern times. It means that it never right. occurred. Right. 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 Okay. So, so, so like, uh, the dharam in, in general. Not even the one that is to encourage it. So that is a discussion that we have to go back to that. Uh, neither someone that says, Ashkim, I'll wake up early and study if that was something positive. To go back, I think it was Chafez, Chafkim, all those, those earlier pages. Okay. Um, Rabbi Lezer says that one of the ways out of Nadarim is that he can say that uh, if I would have known that this and this was going to happen later, then I wouldn't have taken the vow. Chacham and Maishim, the Chacham say that you can't use what happens later to say that you wouldn't have taken the vow initially. The, the, the way to get rid of a vow has to be what was happening back then originally. In other words, I wouldn't have, not something that's gonna happen later. You know, there's different explanations, but one of them is- I didn't know I was the best. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, um, that has a different issue. That's uh, called oh. asmachta. Um, yeah, okay, very good, very good. So one of the explanations for this, which will resolve that question that Hill is saying about Rabbi Akiva, um, is that things that happen, that uh, new occurrences that happen, things change in the market and things, and as we're gonna see some examples, um, things change, this is not common. And it, and it wouldn't be that he had that in, my, in mind originally. Things, only things that are common would he have in mind. So things that are common would be something that he didn't know about. Or some, it, that would be something that I didn't realize that this was gonna be uh, the outcome of this, um, of, of that nether. But something that actually changes in the world, so that would be uncommon. And we won't say that, that, he, that, that he had such a thing in mind. Yeah, let's, we'll see some examples. Kate said, how does this work? Omar, he said, I'm not gonna have benefit from such and such a person. Or, and, the, uh, and this person then turns out he becomes a cipher. Cipher either means a scribe or a student. And this fellow maybe is a teacher or something. He needs a student. Um, or this person is marrying off his son. And uh, there's a wedding. So Vamar, Ilu Yisidea, She Nasa Seifer, She Yamasia Spinai. Well, you see neither. If I would have known that this was going to happen right now, I wouldn't have made the nether. So that's a machlaikis. That's a machlaikis. Rebbe Lezer says that it works. And 
And the Chacham say it doesn't. So Rabbi Lezer is the lenient one here regarding how to get out of vows. First of all, he allows a vow to be annulled based on how this affects the parents. And second of all, he allows a vow to be annulled based on something that's occurred um, <clears throat> after the vow was taken. So even though a vow was made not in front of the parents or anything, they could just say, if you would have said that, if your parents were here, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll get into that tomorrow. It has to be in front of the person. We'll see. I'm not going to enter this house. This is another example of the Nailad. And the house becomes a shul. If I would have known that this house was going to turn into a shul, I wouldn't have said that. So, Rabbi Lezer says that it's okay. That's such a such a Pesach, a way out. The Chachamim say that it's not good. No, the commentaries say that the fact that it repeats it was just because the Mishnah was long. We already said, Rabbi Lezer said, you can do this, and the Chachamim say you can't. But it repeats it at the end because the Mishnah was long, so to make it easier on you, it repeats it. Otherwise, a lot of times the Mishnah said, what is it repeating? What's the, you know? Um, okay. We mentioned that Reb Tzaddik says that if you're going to use the father and mother as a way out of a nether, say if you would know what people would say about your parents, that, you're, you're, that they have a child that just makes nedarim all the time, would you have made this nether? If you're going to use that, like Rabbi Lezer says, so Reb Tzaddik says, and you can also do that for, for God. But say if you would have known that God says that uh, he doesn't like nedarim, would you have made the nether? So Amar, so Gemara says, uh, they, oh, so they responded to him that ain't nedarim. If so, then there's no such thing as a nether. So my ain't nedarim, the Gemara says, what does it mean ain't nedarim? Amar Abaya, Abaya says, nedarim nitarim yafa. We won't really be able to get out of a nether properly. Why? It's very interesting. The way when we ask a person, if you would have known this when you made the nether, would you have done this? It has to be something, we, we mentioned this before, it has to be something that he can answer honestly and we can trust his answer. But here, if you would tell him that if you had known that this upsets God when you make a nether, would you have done it? So he's obviously not gonna say, yes, I would have done it anyway. He can't, he can't answer that. That's a type of question there's only one answer to, at least in public, there's only one answer to that. So when he said, whatever he says, which is obviously is going to say, of course, I want out. Uh, I, I never would have made this nether. So we don't trust him. We don't really know what he meant. Because you set him up. He was primed to, to, give, you, to give this answer. That's not a real question. Okay, now, one second. So one second. So now, if that's the case, so what the Chachamim would say, according to Abaya, you see, this was, this was what Reb Tzadik, this is um, what they're telling Reb Tzadik. The reason why, why, why we don't accept what you're saying, this is the way the Ram's learning, that there's a conversation here. The reason why we don't accept the way out, the Pesach, with saying that, Shem doesn't like Nadarim is because then obviously we know what he's going to answer. So the reason why the Chachamim don't accept Rabbi Eliezer's way out, Rabbi Eliezer's Pesach, which is if you would have known what they would say about your parents, would you have taken the nether? It's exactly the same reason. Because what's he supposed to say? Right? Of course he's going to say that I never would have taken the nether. Uh, however, Rabbi Eliezer. He's, he says that there's a difference between what they would say about Hashem and what they would say about their parents. About Hashem, everyone's going to answer that I, I never would have taken the nether. But about the parents, he said, yeah, yeah, about my parents, uh, yeah, I would have taken the nether anyway. They wouldn't be so, um, they wouldn't be so, they would be, they would be brazen against the parents, but not against Hashem. And therefore, we can trust them when they say that I wouldn't have taken the nether. Because if they were, if they, if 
they uh, really wouldn't have taken the nether, they would have said they wouldn't have taken the nether. If they would, really would have taken the nether anyway, they would have said they would have taken the nether because they don't care. I've got a question. Yeah. You, know, you know, we're making an assumption here that just doesn't sit well. With me. First of all, every avera that a person does, you know, you okay. can say, so, you know, this is an avera. Oh, okay. I, went, I knew when we come yeah, on, you know. But the one thing, even the unaffiliated Jews know, is you can't swear in God's name, right? All right, which is another. So all of a sudden we're picking the one thing that everyone knows and said, like, "Oh, had I known that?" Right. So I don't buy this. Whole okay. Um, now um, the Ran does speak out that one mitzvah people would say, "Oh yeah, I, I, that, I wouldn't have, I would have ignored that one mitzvah." It's only when they say Amafin, the honor of Hashem. That it was that we would make this difference by one mitzvah. People, you see, this is what we mentioned this before. That oh, oh Daniel, um, do we view basically what we're doing here is we're saying that kibbutz aim is as a mitzvah. The mitzvah of kibbutz aim is different than saying kveid amakim, because that's just going under the category of one mitzvah. A lot of times people say, yeah, okay, there's a mitzvah that I'm not so good at. You know, but uh, to say the the honor of Hashem, that they're not going to that 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 they the, they're not going to say in public. Kibbutz Avim is one of the mitzvahs, one of the six thirteen to honor the parents, to honor the parents. So that's also a mitzvah. So what? So well, how could they just? Think, we're we're differentiating between one mitzvah and the general uh, acceptance of of God. That also doesn't sit good with me because the mitzvah kibud abraim is there to according to something to teach us kibud Hashem. So right. again, you happen to be picking the one mitzvah to teach you that. Right. So that that's very interesting because that would come out to be a machlekes, how people view the mitzvah of kibud according, according to, to according to to the chachamim, um, people view. The mitzvah kibbutz avayim, the way they view uh, it's on the it's on the right side of the luchas. It's benadam lamakim. It's like anoichi Hashem alekecha, right? And so if no one's going to deny the kibbutz avayim, so therefore when they're asked the question, would you have done this if you know what they would say about your parents? And so of course he's going to say that I never would have I never would have taken the veil. So then we can't trust him because we know what he's going to say in public. The answer's already there, so we can't trust it. That's the Chachamim's view. Rabbi Eliezer's view said, no, people don't view Kibbut Aveim like that. Kibbut Aveim, they'll mistreat like they'll mistreat every other mitzvah, possibly. And it's only, they'll only lie It's only when they say about Hashem that uh, over there, they're going to be, they're going to lie about it. But uh, otherwise, they'll be honest about uh, Kibbut Aveim. Well, the Took a vow not to not to drink wine. No. Okay. Yeah. So there seems to be also like one big difference, right? That presumably by the parents, they know that the parents are upset, and they're. But by Hashem, do you really know? Maybe Hashem liked this particular vow. Uh huh. Um. Right. Yeah. The the Ran's expression here is that when someone takes a nether, he's kinoider b'melachatzmai. He's taking a vow by Hashem. That's how the Ran learns it. I was saying it that it's just kilo banabama, but that that's not going to fit perfectly because then that's just another mitzvah, right? They ha you have to say it's stronger than this. You have to say that when someone takes a vow, he's taking like they uh, take an oath. You know, uh, that's much more serious. So vow is very, very serious. So is that answering your question? No. So no the Melach Asma meaning he's going by the name of Hashem. He's yeah, he's vowing by the name of Hashem. Oh, okay. So then there's no way to think that it, that would be okay. Right. Okay, got it. This is something that would be uh, understood that this is very serious. Okay. Um What's going on over here? Is the person going to the uh, to the chacham, or is the or are they summoning him? 
he's going to the Chacham. He says he wants to get rid of the vow that he took. He has to have a basis to why he was getting changed? it. <laughs> so the problem is, is that nothing changed. He wants to get rid of it because it's hard on him. He wants to drink uh, the wine. He says it's enough already. I, uh, you know, I'd like to get this off. Now he knew all, all the situation. That's the problem. Remember in those stories over there uh, that earlier, he they said um, I forget who it was, Rabbi. Um, one rabbi, he, he had thought about every possible outcome. He said, did you know about this? Would you have taken it? And he said, yes, I, I thought about that. Did you know, would you have taken it? So he said, get out of here. He was like so upset with him. He said, oh, I didn't know that you were going to get angry at me. <laughs> so, so then they said, oh, okay, it was, he it was, it was Matare. That was the, so yeah, we're talking about what's his way out? What didn't he think of? So the Chacham over here is saying, did you realize that your parent that people would say not nice things about your parents? Um, is that a way out? So the problem with this is, is that according to the Chachamim, the way Abai is explaining, is that then every what do you want him to say? He he would never uh, say something different. So you put him up against the wall, and he said, uh, "No, I wouldn't have made a nether if that's the case." But you can't really trust him because maybe he really would have back then had made the nether. Say we have the benefit. If you want to know your value, you have to have these kind of a circumstance that came into this play, which well, actually, no right, circumstance, right, like this would not actually be new circumstances, sense. new circumstances is itself a problem, right? You say, listen, because that's no look, and I didn't realize that I, uh, my doctor was going to prescribe wine three times a day, right? And now I have this thing, I have to get rid of it, yeah, yeah. So that would that would probably be right. acceptable because that's not that maybe not. Uh, I've been asking, saying if uh, the doctor prescribes wine because uh, they say, you know, an older person should drink wine. Um, he prescribed it twice. Twice a day, yeah, yeah. not three times a day. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so would that be a new circumstance? No, not necessarily. It, w- not, it won't be, an, that could be okay, a way out because example, that's a prescription that they do today, for all everyone that's, that's older. He didn't think about it because he was younger. Today, the point, the point of today, in order to get out of it, that you have to. So the point is that you wouldn't be able to come to court today and say, oh, I'm angry at my parents, and that's nothing new. That's not a new piece of information uh-huh. that came to the plate. Uh-huh. So if, if Basin comes in and I said, listen, Shmuel, we hear you're running all over town, uh, making the dar, and don't you understand the seriousness of this? You see what's going on, your parents' reputation is going in the toilet, you're, you're your sister's not going to be able to get married because of this. <laughs> you know, you're angry. Okay, then the story makes sense. But if she comes to court and says, I want to, I want to know my vow, it's on him to make the claim. It's not the basis of the claim. Okay. But in the Torah, you don't. Rabbi, the other is the son of Shammai. That could be. Well, how does this connect? What do you want to say about Shammai? Right. Oh, so I think both things. Like I think that a lot of times the base Shammai, like they think about potential, or, like they're already oh. thinking about. Things that are going right. to happen in the future, right? Yeah. And then also, they're a little bit more, uh, they don't care as much about it. <laughs> I don't know. No. By the Neula, that would work. Yeah, but I know. That works yeah. with the potential. I mean, that would, that fits make, nicely. Uh, that, was, that was good, Daniel. I yeah. heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that fits nicely. That was good. I'm going to come to your wife and watch the football game with you on Sunday. Yeah, you want to go to that. He says, Atar Sadarim. Atar Sadarim doesn't get rid of a uh, battle. Um, Ataras Nadarim really works for the vows that uh, that you don't remember. Otherwise, other vows really have to go and um, get them annulled properly. Yeah. Maybe I took a vow. You know, maybe I did something three times and I didn't realize it. The, that's what the the the, the stand that standard Ataras Nadarim doesn't get rid of an, a real. Uh, that's what it seems. Okay. What was the exchange with Daniel? Oh, Daniel yeah. said that that um, the Rebbe explains in Sichus uh, that um, Rabbi Eliezer that that, that Bisham that when the Machlekes Bisham and Bisil Bisham looks at the potential, Bisil looks at the practical, and um, by Shvat they have that the two Bishvat or Rishchei the Shvat. There's potential. This uh, oh by by Hanukkah, how many days are 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 left 
versus how many days you had. There's uh, this. Uh, anyway, if that's the case, Rabbi Eliezer is in, in the Gemara is known as Shamuti, the student of Shammai. So when he says that you can look at the Noila, things that are, don't, didn't actually happen when you took the vow, but they happened later, and that could be an explanation because it's, you're looking at potential. You view potential as the reality. Okay. Um, and, and also maybe the Shama doesn't care about people's feelings that much. It, so. <laughs> that's a different... Parents' feelings wouldn't matter. <laughs> that's, a, that's a different uh, spin on this. Uh -huh. Because of Shama, I uh, chased the guy out with the stick. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. If something would have changed, yeah, like if, if the change of circumstances was something like very yeah. odd, so then then, um, but that's where you would have the machlekes if you can use that. And a change of circumstance that's very common, you can still even the chacham are going to say you can use. Change of circumstance that's odd is where the machlekes is. Yeah. Okay. Rava, yeah, it was, you can think the other way, but you'll see, it's going to be clear in the Gemara. Rava Amar, Rava says a different interpretation of what's the issue of using the honor of God to get rid of the vow. It says, Rava Amar, if you're going to use such a, um, what do you call it, like a blanket uh, excuse, you can get out of every vow. You'll never need to, you never need to go to a Chacham. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, he may end up, uh, according to Rashi, the commentary called Rashi, um, he may end up not annulling, not getting the vow annulled by someone else. He may just say, okay, it's automatically annulled because I thought of an excuse. He may not realize that someone else needs to say mutalach, mutalach. He may think that he can do it on his own if, he, if he's going to be able to get out of a vow with this. Okay, Duran asks a question. I can use this statement of, who, who, first of all, who are we explaining over here? We're explaining why we don't use Reb Tzadik, who says that the honor of Hashem should be an excuse to get out of every vow, because you swore, you, you vowed in the, in, by the king himself, or, and, and not um, uh, by the parents. What about the parents? If, according to Abaya, Rabbi Eliezer says people would say the truth about the parent. They would say that even though I know it doesn't look good for my parents, but I don't care. And so if he says that I do care, so then we believe him. Because if he didn't, if he didn't care, he would have said it. According to Rava, that says that it all has to do with the decree. That if this, if you're going to allow blanket statements to be, uh, to be uh, a Pesach, to be a way out of a vow, so then... It's not good for my parents' honor. It's also a blanket statement that also doesn't work. So that's the Ran's question on, on, this, on this Gemara. The Ran answers that there are certain Nadarim that are so minor that it doesn't affect the honor of the parents. So it's not really a blanket statement. It would only be a blanket statement to be the, for the honor of Hashem. I took a minor vow, you know, I don't know. It's not going to uh, drink coffee. Bite his nails. Um, I don't know something that 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 no one know, has to know about. There's something that's not a oh, coffee. Everyone knows about. But uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, that's major. <laughs> that's major. <laughs> I didn't take another. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, so that wouldn't affect the parents. So therefore, when they tell him, if you would have known that uh, what people are going to say about uh, look at the parents that raised the person that takes the vows, so uh, that wouldn't have affected it. So because there are certain vows that are not affected by this, by that, so then we would say that he would still use the chacham when he has to annul a vow, because there are vows that are not affected. But when it comes to the melech, to, the, to, uh, to use the king himself, Hashem himself, as a way out, then that would be every vow. And so therefore, there would never be a use for a chacham. Okay, take, let's take a look. We have uh, two interpretations, how this works. One is a bias interpretation, one is Rav's interpretation. So I explained the machlekes of the Chachamim and Rabbi Lezer in Reb Tzadik according to Abaya. 
than the run. That would a person be ashamed to say his true intention? According to Reb Tzaddik, he wouldn't be ashamed and he can actually use it. He would say his real intention, even by to say, if you had known that this is not nice for Hashem. According to Rabbi Lazar, he wouldn't have done it for Hashem. He wouldn't have said his real intention, but he would have said his real intention for the parents. And according to the Chamim, even for the parents, he wouldn't have said his real intention. He, he, uh, he would be ashamed. And so therefore, you can't trust the, that, that excuse. In Rava, there's two, two ways of going about this. Um, one thing we did say was that we explained to Rabbi Eliezer that Rabbi Eliezer would make it, would differentiate between the parents and Hashem when it comes to do we need a Chacham? Because there, since there are certain vows that would not affect the parents' honor. And so therefore, Rabbi Eliezer would say that you can use that as a, that that the parents' honor could be used as an excuse. And we're not, we're not gonna say that, oh, that's a blanket statement and you'll never need a chacham again, we should make a gzir that that doesn't work. Because there are certain vows where it actually doesn't work anyway. And what would the chachamim say? Um, <clears throat> chachamim would say, um, that this would work for all, all vows. I guess even for those minor vows, that it doesn't look good for the parents' honor. That's what the Chachamim would say. And that's why you can't use the parents according to the Chachamim. <coughs> There's another interpretation here from the Ran. And um, and um, what comes out from the second interpretation is that Rebbe Lezer just ignores the whole uh, Rava, and Rava is actually only explaining the Chachamim. Um, yeah, but whatever the case is, let's, let's uh, we'll see. Tanan was taught in the Mishnah. Maidim Chacham le Rebbe Lezer bedavish shebeinu le bein aviv beimai shepaislim bechveid avivim. The Chachamim say that you can use the parents' honor if it was a vow that actually affected the parent. Said he's not going to have benefit from the parents, so the parents can't have benefit from him. So then you could say if you would know what you would, what people would say about the, about the parents that you take take a vow directly about them that really doesn't look good that would be a real way out. Bish baya the Gemara says the Gemara is doing a comparison here. We quote the Mishnah and then we're going to ask on Rafa. Bish lemala baya this is how it introduces it. According to Abaya, it works out well. That if so, vows will not be will be authentically um, absolved because a person is always going to lie about this. So it's not, it's not really authentic. But since this person just took a vow that he doesn't want to have any benefit from his parents, so we see that he doesn't care about uh, being uh, disrespectful to his parents. So now when he's saying, we ask him if you would know what you would have said about, people would say about your parents, would you have taken the vow? He would say the truth because he took the vow against it. That's exact. So he would say the truth. So, oh, in such a vow, you can trust him. That's Abaya's logic. But according to Rava, that says if you're going to accept such an excuse, that if you know the way people would talk about your parents, that you take a vow. So then, if this is going to work, so then why do we use this in such a case as well? If you can use it in this case, then. No one's going to ever go to a Chacham. Amri, they said like this. No, that's not a, a, a question. Given the Kol Nidre Leisagi line, the Lav Chacham, Achanami Paisen. We don't have to go to the Chacham every time to get the Pesach. So you're obviously going to need three people to, to, to annul the vow. But since sometimes you're going to have to go to the Chacham, not every vow is about the parents. And those vows that aren't about the parents, the parents don't aren't used as an excuse to get out of a vow. So since for any of those vows, you're going to need to go to a Chacham. 
So then we allow this vow to be annulled as well in such a way. Okay. Can we learn whether a true vow needs witnesses? The reason I'm asking is if someone takes a vow and doesn't need witnesses, for example, to not drink coffee, nobody knows about it. No one knows about it. So right. there's no issue. It's just about between him and Hashem. Hmm? Oh, oh, well, that's what you're saying. Um, That is the logic of, of Rabbi Eliezer, that there are certain vows that people won't know about and that therefore the, it won't affect the parents. Um, I guess what the Chachamim would say was that every vow would, it, would affect the parents, would affect- Even if it's not communicated yeah, to others. Yeah, because maybe what they would say is that everyone would somehow find out. I'm not sure the exact logic. Okay. Depends on uh, if the this Facebook or something where everyone knows everything. <laughs> I'm expecting you to read the question. I'm sorry. Oh, two trophies. Okay. Now we're, we're, we go into the machlaikis between the Chacham and Rebbe If you can use a new development, a new circumstance, when all about. If you would have known um, that this was going to happen in the market, something was going to turn into a shul. This fellow, right? This fellow was going to be uh, what was that? The the, the the Bitcoin or something that became. A, if you would have known that, would you have uh, uh, made this vow? Uh, I guess that you, people predicted it before. That was uh, okay. So. Um, Rebbe says that that is acceptable vow and the Chacham say it's not. My time at the Rebbe Lezer, the Gemara asks, what's the reason for Rebbe Lezer why you can use a new circumstance for, to uh, annul a vow? I'm Rav Chizda. Chizda says, Damakra, we have a Pasuk. Kala Nashim. Now, the people that were, that wanted your life are, have passed away. This is Maisha, Maisha Rabbeinu goes to Yisrael. He marries to Pira. Yisrael tells him, you have to swear to me that you're not going to go back to Mitzrayim just, uh, you know, randomly, just, just, uh, just to go back. So Moshe swears to Yisri. Now Hashem comes to Moshe and says, return to Egypt. Why? Return to Mitzrayim. And what's the, the Pesach? What's the way out? It says, because those people that wanted your life have passed away. Okay, now, um, them passing away is Nailad. That's a new thing that happened. That's a new circumstance. Now, everyone passes away, but it doesn't have to be passing away right then. That's why we say, Nisa, the Nailad. Nisa is Nailad. Nisa is Nailad. So, death is being born. So, it's a new circumstance. Now, you have to add to this, obviously, that Moshe took a vow to the Yisrael. You mean the people in Mitzrayim? The people in Mitzrayim, we're talking about. Um, and da Dasan and Aviram, who are these uh, these troublemakers mm -hmm. that were, got Moshe into trouble, they're not going to pursue getting Moshe into trouble. They went out to the midbar. Oh, so one second. He, but what, so how does Hashem say? All the people that wanted your life passed away. You see, it works. This is how Hashem got Moshe out of the vow. Because Moshe's intention when he took the vow was also that he's not going back because of those people, even though he took the vow to Yisrael, who probably didn't have that in mind, but Moshe's intention was with that in mind. And the next page- Well, gonna, at some point they were gonna, they were gonna die, right? Gonna die. But I, I guess mm -hmm. the uh, suddenly was not, was surprising. They must've been young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Also, um, a lot of times when people have enemies or something, uh, they hope that they die, but they end up living forever. <laughs> well, uh, forever, like much longer than the, than the people want. So, okay. Um, uh -huh. Yes, that's what the Yisrael is smart. 
No right. more Ukraine visits. Exactly. So what did you mumble this? Don't no, no worry about it. Naftali said he never, he never thought of making his sons in law take oaths not to take his daughters out of the country. Like Gisser did. He wanted to keep his daughter close yeah. to home. Ukraine. He doesn't understand. No, I do. Now that you hear what he said. It's a personal yeah. thing. Not too important. In, you in Chabad, it's a big know. deal because they moved to Australia and you see them once every 10 years. You know, so. Okay. Um, <laughs> Rabbanon Mai Tamayo. Okay, so Rebbe Lezer has a good source. What's the logic for the Rabbanon? Kasavri Hanimi Maisi. The Rabbanon say what uh, Yonatan said. Oh. Did they actually die? If it says standing or it says standing, those are two words for standing, right? Nitzim and Nitzavim. Um, standing. Striving. Striving or, uh, or standing. Fighting or standing. Uh, that's that's Dustin Aviram. Elam Reish Lakish Yardim and Echseyem. No, it's not that they that they died. They just lost their money. And and that's considered, as we're going to see, that's considered like that. Now, so why does that help? That's also Nilets. The answer is, is that losing money is something that's common. People that can lose money multiple times in their life, right? They go up and down. Uh, uh, it's better than actually dying. Right. It's better than actually dying. But the Maybe idea over like here is that this is something that is not Nilet because it's expected. Rabbi Shua Ben Levi says anyone that doesn't have children is considered like he's dead because uh, uh, Rachel tells Yaakov, give me children, if not, it's like I'm dead. Betanya and Abstad and Abraisa, Baruch HaShuv and Kameis is four people that are considered like dead. Ani, Metzayra, Sumo, Mishen, Leibanim. A poor person, a leper, a blind person, and someone that doesn't have children. Ani, Dixiv, Kameis, Kala, Nashim. The poor person is because it says that Dasan and Aviram lost their power. Since they lost their money, then Parik is not going to listen to them when they try to, to uh, influence Parik to, to get rid of Moshe. Why would he listen to them? Because they uh, support his um, political campaign. But now they lost their money. Right. Mitzayra, Dixiv, al This is by... Um, No, why Anani is considered to be dead, that I didn't explain. I'm just saying that why does this affect Moshe, why, why Moshe should return to Egypt? Since Dustin and Aviram lost their money, it's because now they won't be influential over Pare. Why Anani is considered to be dead is because he doesn't have all the pleasures. That, uh... No, Kimesikola Anashim, Kama. Mitzayra, why is it Mitzayra considered dead? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not also that the, the poor person doesn't have free will. He's like just trying to survive, so he doesn't really have free will. Like Maybe. Maybe. Maybe the uh, the, the what the, we're quoting what happened by Maisha that Dustin and Aviram they died, but they didn't really die. They only lost their money. So that's a proof that a poor person is like he's dead. Now, why is that? Uh, it's either because they don't have all the pleasures of life because they're, they're poor. Or like Reb Daniel says that they don't have free will because they're, they're trying to survive. So I once heard that when you lose all your money, you're actually supposed to die. There's just like oh. Hashem gave you a chance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you That's good. Even right. Money, let me finish, uh, let me finish this because I don't want them to be late. Mitzayu Dixiv al by Miriam it says, why should she be uh, like dead? In the darkness, uh, I was led like the dead of the uh, of like the like the people that are dead. Which means that someone that's blind, someone that can't see, is like dead. If uh, you don't give me my children, then it's like I'm it's, it's like I'm dead. This is what Rachel said. Okay. Let's leave it over here. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Cole.